YouTube, Twitter, what's up? It's your boy. I got a video for y'all today. Uh, just talking uh, sports in general, Detroit sports, uh, of course. Um, and another topic on the side, man. Uh, first and foremost, I want to start with our Tigers, man, since they're the most current and they're actively playing right now. Um, the Detroit Tigers, man. Chris Illich got to do something with this bullpen situation, man. We pay, we pay two players that are absolutely trash. I mean, Sanchez and, and you know K Rod are fucking terrible, They're causing us games. The the you know J D Martinez has been out of his mind, uh, and we got hitters, man. We 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 have the players to really make a real push. For the World Series, man. And the only thing that's holding us back is the pitching. They got to figure it out. They got to do something. They got to something. They have to do something, man. Um, and Sanchez is absolutely terrible, man. I, You know, I just want to take a bat and beat his knees like Nancy Kerrigan. <laughs> I mean, this guy is... Uh, he's horrible, man. And he, he's causing us, you know... A lot of victories, um, you know, and K-Rod is just as terrible. Um, the Tigers really have the roster to do some serious da some damage, man. Anytime you got Avila hitting home runs, man, you know, it, it's, it's going pretty good, you know. Still early, you know how many games it is in the, in the M uh, MLB uh, season, so... Just wanted to put that out there, man. Illich, young fella, it's on you, man. You got to do something. Uh, it's not Brad Asmus fault. Um, you know, a lot of people still want to point at Brad Asmus, dude. No, this is not on him. This is on the uh, the ownership. They have to make the moves, man. Asmus, Asmus can work with what he's given, and they're not giving him. Uh, a chance to, to, to be successful with that fucking bullpen, dude. It's ridiculous. Um, but moving on. On to the Lions, man. I know everybody is just as ready for football like I am, man. I'm just ready for training camp, something, anything. I'm ready to see these rookies, man. I'm ready to, to get things going because I think this season is going to be something special. Um, first and foremost, I think the Lions in best case scenario would probably be eleven and five. Um and at, at worst they will repeat with nine and seven. Um but in the middle I believe they will be ten and six. Um I think that's where I'm sticking. I'm sticking with ten and six. Um that's my safe prediction for the season, uh the season coming up for the Lions, man. Um ready to see these new uniforms, ready to see these new players, uh new offensive line. Um, added pieces to the defense, uh, the, the middle linebacker core, and you know we got some. We got a tight end with 11 inch hands now. <laughs> I want to see what this young guy can do, man. And, you know Agnew and Galladay, and you know of course T's Tabor. I'm ready to see these guys go ahead, man, and, and you know make it known that they they here to stay. Um, with that being said, man. Um, you know, a lot of the predictions are out already. The disrespect for the Detroit Lions has started already, just like it did last year. Last year they were saying we go four and twelve. This year I'm seeing uh, five and eleven, and I seen another four twelve this year. So we'll see. If, we'll see where that takes us. Um, definitely believe the Lions are gonna make the playoffs this year, though. So um, just to put that out there, uh, nice and early for y'all. Uh, but yeah, man. Uh, downtown is going to be rocking, especially around uh, November. You know, you got your, your new Pistons uh, down there, the new logo. Uh, I'm feeling the new logo. I didn't want no ugly ass horse to come back, you know, and I didn't want nothing extra. You know, this is a little bit of the old and some of the new. It's I wouldn't even call it a new old, uh, logo. I'm going to call it uh, a revamped old bad boys logo. Um I'm feeling the logo, man, and, you know, I've been hearing little rumors out there about they may change up the uniforms and stuff like that, so 
Uh, we'll see where that takes us. But um, definitely excited for the new stadium, of course. But it's going to be rocking downtown in November, man. I'm already putting days in at work, man, for, uh, you know, certain stuff. So definitely be seeing me at some of the game shooting videos. So um, that atmosphere is going to be electric downtown. Um, but, yeah, the Pistons, uh, they, you know, Andre Drummond had the surgery on his nose, nostril. This guy has been breathing out of one nose since college, one nostril since college. And uh, that affects everything, dude. That affects your overall uh, oxygen to your blood cells, man. It, you know, he already said that he noticed a major difference uh, since he had that adjusted. So hopefully his condition can improve a lot uh, as far as more energy. Uh, he's lost weight as well, so we'll see where that takes him in. Um, hearing good things about Reggie Jackson as well, man, as far as his recovery from his knee. Um, he, I hear that he's feeling really good, so I'm definitely looking forward to it. But as far as the draft, we pick number 12, um, you know, and I believe that if Collins is still there, I believe that's where the Pistons will end up going. Um, I feel like the Pistons need to go there and they need to find somebody to take John Luer off our hands. Get his ass out of here. Is uh, This guy, you know, his last 30 games of the season, season was horrid, man. So let Henry Ellison go ahead and get the minutes. And um, let's just go ahead and move forward from that. Uh, but he's on my X list. Don't want to see him, Baines, or Deron Hillier in a Pistons jersey next season. Uh, don't know what's going to happen with Reggie Bullock, but we'll see. Um, we don't have a second round pick, so I'm looking for this first round pick. And um, I'm just hoping that the, the Pistons make the right move uh, for a knee. So uh, we definitely see what happened with the draft, man. The draft is right around the corner. So um, it all depends on how the chips fall, man. Every year we say this person ain't going to be there, that person ain't going to be there, and it happens. Um, I mean, look how we got Andre Drummond, dude. I just knew for sure he wouldn't be there. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, but on to the topic that I wanted to talk to y'all about. This Michael Jordan, LeBron James discussion is really sickening me to my stomach. Listen, me and LeBron James are roughly the same age. He's a, a son of my era. But I have enough sense to know that being 31 years old, LeBron cannot be spoken in the same air as Michael Jordan, dude. Michael Jordan, we talk about a man that every time he went to the finals, he won. Not get his ass kicked and embarrassed and run to another team to join up with somebody. We talking about a man that came into uh, the same type of similar situation where the team was totally garbage and he changed it. Um, you know, I'm not pulling away from LeBron's talent, but dude, Michael Jordan had to face our fucking Pistons, our bad boy Pistons. He had to get through them. He had to get through the Showtime Lakers. He had to get through the real Boston Celtics. He had to face Reggie Miller. He had to face Penny Hardaway and Shaq in Orlando. This man went through the fire. Who the fuck have LeBron played against? Besides what, the big three? I mean, come on, bro. I mean, Golden State, you know what I'm saying? Playing against them to me is still is not enough. It's not enough because we talking about a team that just shoot trades, man. It's a total different ball game. Jordan had to go through defense, get his ass kicked. Fucking career threatened injuries could have happened with, you know, the, the bad boys era and the Celtics. Um, dude, it, it's no contest. LeBron is not playing anybody, man. He has a straight path to the fucking finals every time. It's always something. Some Somebody star got injured or the East is just garbage. Especially this year, the East is super duper garbage. I mean, this year is just, I mean, it's, I don't even want to watch, dude. I still haven't really been watching the playoffs, man. 
I watched some of that Boston game yesterday. I knew it was over from the start, man. Outmatched. How the fuck are you going to guard LeBron James, Tristan Thompson, and Kevin Love in the post area and around the rim with Kelly Olenek and motherfucking Zeller? Are you out of your motherfucking mind? Al Horford is not the old Al Horford. It, dude, it's a wrap. I'd be surprised if they don't get swept. But uh, no disrespect to the Boston fans, man. Y'all had a great year. You know, number one in the East and all of that. That's why I said the regular season means nothing. You have to get there first. Because right now, the two teams that had the better record are getting their ass kicked the worst. Indiana played the best series against the Cleveland Cavaliers. They almost played like we did when we played them. And remember, we were the eighth seed. So all of y'all that's tied up on records and these stats and all these percentages, go jump in the lake, man. Shove a long, big black dildo right down your throat because you're a dick sucker. Uh -huh. It means nothing, man. It means nothing. Your team should be built for the playoffs. Um, the regular season is just the regular season, man. Win enough games to get there. And then in the playoffs, do damage. That's what you're supposed to do. Um, you think Cleveland was concerned with Boston uh, because they was number one seed and they have home court advantage? Man, LeBron was fucking out there having a good time last night. It's ridiculous, man. And it's boring to watch. I mean, and it's, 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 it can attest to the reason why the ratings is dropping with the NBA. Um, because people, it's so predictable, it's ridiculous. Now, Golden State, they're up because of Zaza Pachulia ugly ass playing dirty and what he did to Kawhi Leonard, which is my favorite uh, player in the NBA. Uh, if you, a lot of y'all didn't know that. Um, you know, the Pistons are my favorite team, but Kawhi is my favorite individual player. Uh, so... You know, with him being out, you know, as soon as he went out, they came back. You know, 25 down, it's getting ass beat to shit, man. As soon as he went down, I knew it was a problem. We talking about a team that didn't have Tony Parker. Didn't have Tony Parker, and that was beating the shit out of um, Golden State. So, with that being said, you know, both of them two teams are exactly what I thought they were going to be. It's, uh, when the moves first uh, happened, they're what they, I was, you know, I was telling you guys, they have trouble when a team has good length and are, you know, gritty on the defensive end and also talented on the offensive end as far as the post. Uh, Golden State let a lot of their defensive guys go um, and a lot of key role players just to acquire Kevin Durant. And that's what the Spurs was exposing, you know, until Kawhi got hurt. And, you know, Tony and Kawhi out, man, that's kind of hard to deal with. You know what I mean? So, you know, and um, same thing with Cleveland. You know, the reason, even though they beat Indiana, they were having trouble with Indiana because Indiana, Miles Turner, they was giving, they was having problems down there in the post. Miles Turner was a beast in that series, man. So, if Jeff Teague didn't freeze up like he usually do, um, Indiana would have had a chance to win a couple of games, man. But Paul George was the only guy that they pretty much had. So, to, you know, to be Indiana and just have Paul George and be able to stick around in some of them games like that, the last shot situations, that's kind of remarkable. Um, and it's even souring for me because I feel like the Pistons, they're supposed to be in the playoffs still right now. Um, but due to our injuries and due to the, you know, the situation that happened to us last season, it's just not so. But, yeah, the, the Jordan-LeBron conversation shouldn't even be a conversation, dude. I don't give a fuck about how many points LeBron scored or what uh, scoring title. No one gives a fuck about that. It's the eye test, man. It's the eye test. He will never be better than Michael Jordan. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know a lot of y'all are young and... You know, I'm young myself. I'm 31. But, I mean, real young. A lot of you 19, 8-year-olds, 18-year-olds, 20-year-olds. Y'all just think LeBron is the greatest thing since sliced bread. He's really not. You need to take time. Go on YouTube or whatever you need to 
and look at the the uh, the the old uh series between uh Michael Jordan and the teams he had to face, you know, you know, it is no contest, man. It is no contest. So I just wanted to chat some sports with y'all, man. Don't want to make this video too long. It's already 15 minutes. So uh, let me know what y'all think, man, about some of these topics. You know, I just wanted to come on here and talk to y'all fellas. I've been absent, you know, since teams go on break. Well, damn it, I go on break too. Uh, so uh, just wanted to chat with y'all fellas, man. So shout out to the DVE family, man. And I uh, hope y'all fellas drop some videos, man. Uh, looking forward to watch y'all. I'll catch up with y'all later.